Hi guys, Lunar here, welcome back to another Cyberpunk 2077 video. A new trailer just released for the game and some of the coolest new details in there were they do with gameplay and specifically leisurely stuff you could do in Night City, like riding roller coasters, listening to live music and even scuba diving. So I wanted to make a list of other features that you could do while playing the game. So here are 77 other gameplay features you can look forward to when playing Cyberpunk. The map size is smaller than The Witcher 3's, but has significantly more doors to enter and explore. In fact, the Witcher's map is mostly filled with open spaces like forests and mountains, while a huge portion of Cyberpunk is actual city. Verticality then will play a big part in exploration, with a big focus on large and tall buildings, which are fully explorable. The city is divided into six districts. City Centre, Watson, Westbrook, Haywood, Pacifica and Santa Domingo. Moreover, the city is surrounded by badlands which can be visited during the game, and each district has tons and tons of stuff to do. You can explore a lot of the city straight from the beginning of the game. Of course, some locations will be locked by quests. The streets will be busy with both pedestrians and traffic, making the city feel alive. The game features over 1,000 unique NPCs with their own daily routines to add to the life of the streets, including all types of people from office workers to prostitutes. The city will feel lived in with the walls of every building are covered with posters, graffiti, advertising, and the floors of buildings will be strewn with litter. NPCs will also have tons of unique looks, including all body sizes, colors, and plenty of NPCs with heavy body mods. If that's not your thing, don't worry, there are animals in Night City, and you can pet things like cats. Looting will play a big part in exploration, with junk, weapons, codex, and plenty more to find in most places. The game has a carry weight limit and limited inventory space, so you'll need frequent trips to your apartment and vendors to offload stuff and free up your space. Currently, there are 44 different vehicles to choose from, including hypercars, sports, motorcycles, executive, economy, heavy, police, taxis, and the list is expected to increase. And while nothing is confirmed for these yet, there are plenty of flying vehicles in the game, including helicopters, which we can see in trailers, but it's unclear whether they will be usable. But you can steal cars in Cyberpunk. You have your own apartment in Night City. Your apartment will have a storage room for your weapons and gear, and you can store cars in your apartment's garage. You can call your car at any time as it's AI controlled, or you can also call an Uber style driverless taxi to drive you to your location. Fast traveling across the map is possible with the end cart system, the Night City Area Rapid Transit. You do need to unlock the fast travel points first in order to go from one place to another. Vehicles will have radio featuring 10 different radio stations. You can race other vehicles in Night City. There are other mini games as well in Night City, including hacking, boxing, and shooting ranges. You can kill who you want in the city, but you'll be wanted and pursued by the police. On the other hand, you can come across crimes in progress and help the police for a small reward. You can use the NPCS, which is the Night City Police Scanner, to find new activities to do in every area. Activities appear on the map, including Gun for Hire, Search and Recovery, Thievery, Agent Saboteur, SOS, Merc Needed, and Special Deliveries, and also training, shooting ranges, and all the other things that we've mentioned. Many of these activities are for bolstering skills. The shooting range can be used to level up your rifles, handguns, and sniper rifles, and boxing can be used to level up your melee skills. Car races can be used to bolster your nerve and engineering. There are many vendors, shops, and restaurants to visit in the city including weapon shops, bars, nightclubs, diners, and sex shops, just to name a few. There are street stories around the map, small quests that offer XP and a little lore that are separate from the main and side quests. Completing contracts are possible, tasking you with finding cyber psychos, people whose cyber tech has gone crazy because they have a little too much of it. You can pick from three different starting backgrounds, nomad, street, or corporate. Depending on the starting background you pick will determine where you start in the game. Nomads, for example, start in the Badlands surrounding the city. There are many mega corporations in the Night City, but three main ones in the game are called Araska, Militech, and Kang Tao. There are also many gangs in Night City fighting for control of the streets. They are called the Sixth Street, all the Caldos, Animals, Maelstrom, Moxies, Scavengers, Tiger Claws, Valentinos, Voodoo Boys, and Wraiths. You can't join gangs in the game, but it's up to you whether you work or don't work with them because you are a mercenary, so it's really your choice. There are 12 different weapon manufacturers in Cyberpunk 2077, each selling different types of items. Weapons are split into three different types, power, smart, and tech. Power is more traditional weapons. Tech has things like customizable bullets and railguns, while smart offers features including auto-targeting systems. There are nine different current weapon types in game, 
pistols, shotguns, auto rifles, SMG, explosives, nano wires, cyber katana, mantis blades, and the cyber deck. Weapons will have unique stats split into damage, rate of fire, accuracy, range, recoil, spread, and penetration. There are four different weapon rarities in game, common, uncommon, rare, and legendary, which offer better stats and more unique traits, the better the rarity of the weapon. Weapons can be upgraded and improved with new components like silencers. Weapons can be given elemental damage like poison and fire. Grenades can be thrown back at enemies. Many of the game's legendary weapons will be tough to collect because they will be given to players based on many factors including mission choices. That also means you can play the game again and again different ways and get different rewards. If that wasn't enough, there is a crafting system where you can make your own weapons and armor which includes legendary items. Weapons and armor can be upgraded by crafting, so looting components is definitely a big part of the game. Clothing in game has no stats on their own, but they can be upgraded with better perks and more mod slots which can affect stats overall. The game will have 75 unique side quests, and some side quests can alter the outcome of the main story. The main story will be shorter than The Witcher 3, however each mission will be a lot more complex and the world will offer more, meaning the game time overall will be a lot longer than The Witcher's. The game takes place mostly in first person and that includes many of the game's cutscenes. The player has a mobile phone so not all missions need to take place in person, you could simply video call them. Missions can be completed in multiple ways depending on your playstyle, so you can go all guns blazing or stealth or anything in between. If you stealth kill players you can hide their bodies in containers. You can hack the environment to distract enemies or even have them kill themselves if they have enough tech on them. The game will have multiple endings. The game will have many romance options as well. But unlike many RPGs, the romance options will be very complex. You have to select the right options when available and you have to do many different things in order to romance anyone, including answering texts. You can have same sex romance options if you want to in game. Romance options can be affected by character customization at the very start of the game. But character creation allows players to customize skin type, hairstyle, eyes, eyebrows, mouth, jaw, ears, cyberwear, scars, tattoos, piercing, teeth, eye makeup, lip makeup, blemishes, nipples, body tattoos, body scars, penis type, vagina options, and pubic hair. Players are also able to change the color of the hair and eyes, and the game also features sliders that can be used for all of those things. When choosing a sex, you can be male, female, or neither, and you can pick any voice type. You can look at the player character in-game using mirrors. There are no set classes in Cyberpunk, but there are two main types, Solo and Netrunner. Solo is your basic running gun focusing on strength and speed, while Netrunner is more stealth from a distance with hacking. There are three kinds of XP in-game, level XP, street cred XP, and perk tree related XP, and when you fill their respective progressive gauges, you earn points to spend. Regular XP allows you to unlock new attributes, and there are five main attributes, strength, reflex, intelligent tech, and coolness, each offering two to three talent trees with 20 perks each. Perk XP then, for example, doing stealth kills will give you stealth XP and allows you to level up the stealth related perks. Street cred XP allows you to level up the street cred, which unlocks new items and gear at vendors. Different skills and perks that you pick can affect dialogue options in game. The game allows you to cover behind objects, that also means enemies can too. You can finish the game without getting any kills. There is a stamina bar that you must keep an eye on when doing certain things, like melee attacks. You can play the game entirely with just melee weapons, like the Cyberware Mantis Blades. You can upgrade your character with Cyberware at the Ripper Dock. There are three types of Cyberware in game. Active, you must activate. Passive, which auto-activates. And Triggered, which activates after certain conditions are met. 18 different cyberware slots can be installed on your body, but rarer and more unique items take up more slots. The game will have fall damage, but also cyberware to counteract it. You can hack lots of different things in game, but it uses up more memory points. The points regenerate over time though. Cyberware includes faster movement, scanners, mantis blades, increased damage and more, and you can choose to have no implants if you don't want them, although some do install through the main story like brain dances. Brain Dances record all of your gameplay and can be rewatched in VR. It's used to help find important info you might miss from quests and more. You can play the game in multiple difficulties, including Story and Hardcore. You can self revive with the Second Heart ability. The Hardcore mode will feature no HUD, making for an incredibly challenging playthrough. 
The game features no enemy scaling, so enemies have set power levels. If you see one that's much higher than you, then you should probably run away. Easter eggs will be something to look out for when playing the game. We already know that there are many real life characters as NPCs and plenty of Witcher Easter eggs, so you have to look out for them when you're playing. There you have it then guys, 77 awesome gameplay features to look forward to in Cyberpunk. If you liked the video, leave a like and comment, and if there are any features missing from the list, post them in the comments below. Have an awesome day, and I will see you guys soon for another Cyberpunk video.